time for another tourney journey. We're going to do another Grant's journey because those are the most fun, as we know. As you can see, Jonathan is at my table for this one. This is actually a tournament that Jonathan had a tourney journey on. It's just my perspective, my hands from the same tournament. Let's see how it goes battling Jonathan. Jonathan, are you ready to battle? Let's 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 go, bro. Throw gloves. Is that what they throw? Throw some gloves down. Okay, bro. We'll throw we'll throw some gloves. Well, we're starting with me with King Queen here. Opening seems pretty standard. I like how I'm playing it so far. Yeah. Bapsaroni in the big blind is Batiste from Poker Time. And has like his whole life is, mission is to beat you or me in anything ever. So he can know that he did that. <laughs> Looks like, uh, see, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I, I suppose I typed to him, told him to fight the urge. <laughs> 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 he does like to three bet, but he nice. just calls here and I get the good, good flop. flop. <laughs> good texting by me as well, apparently. All right. I think it's going to check to me here. How do you want to proceed when check to on this board with this hand? I think we should bet small. This is a board we would normally bet. I think we should bet, especially against a guy like Batiste, where he might play back at us. He might do all sorts of crazy things. These guys don't have better kings, so we can get called by worse hands. If they have a pocket pair, they might call once, too. We're really deep. I don't want to give a free card. I want to bet. Like 350. Uh, here's something that I was thinking at the time, which yeah. is Costco, who is also an aggressive player. Batiste is an aggressive player, and so is Costco. They both have pretty wide ranges here. Don't have too many hands that can continue. I don't necessarily expect Batiste to attack this board. He, does, he doesn't really attack dry boards that often. I know he knows he could have a bunch of deuces, but he, he's more apt to attack wet boards. So I, I think I ended up checking here with the hope that one of these two guys is going to try to bluff into me in the future. Okay. But I understand your reasoning as well. Let's see. There isn't that much to project check. against. It's just as if one of them has a king, you can sometimes get three streets. That's the, that's the value of betting. That's all. Either way, I did check, yeah. hoping one of them bets, obviously, and they don't. So now I'm going to have to try to build a pot. Bet pretty small. Get yeah, called by Costco. Called. All right. So this is, uh, it's not the worst card in the world. I, I, some straights come in there. Do we think I can get called if I bet again? Costco usually doesn't have a king, right? Because he didn't bet the turn. So I think you can get called. I do. If, yeah. not, Costco has a lot of like medium pocket pairs based on how he's played this hand, like pocket eights. And I absolutely think you get called here because you checked the flop, actually. I agree. Let's see if he calls. He does. He does. I win. We don't know what he yeah, had, but it's pocket eights for sure. Probably not something as good as a king. And here I have ace, deuce of oh, clubs okay. against PDX Russ H and PDX 88888. Flop in the flush draw. Do you like betting this board, even though it doesn't really hit my range as hard as it hits my opponent's ranges? It's a good question. Um, I sort of do only because what's our game plan otherwise? Like we're going to check call and then have to check fold a lot of turns. I'd rather just hold on to it, you know, hold on to the, um, the initiative right now with this particular hand specifically. Uh, we can, I guess, you know, and this is the kind of hand where if we get raised, we don't have to fold, which is kind of nice. You know, we can call or re-raise depending on what we think about the player. Mostly we call, I would think. I, I think I like betting. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. Mostly the game plan thing. Like yeah. it just plays so much easier as a bet than a check and then try to figure out other situations in the future. So yeah, I like betting. I understand the range advantage thing, but you can sometimes bet when you don't have a range advantage. I think it's okay to do it every once in a yeah, while. You just gotta, with... you, you, you just got to bet with less of your range. That's all. Yeah. And so like, this is like, if you're not going to bet a nine, you're not going to bet a 10. You're not going to bet over pairs. You can bet with some flush draws because you're going to bet with some air. Right. So I think yep. it's fine. And we turn the nuts here. Do yeah, we want to check or do we want to bet? Build a pot, build a pot. All right. Play devil's advocate for me though, because I know that was going to be your response. What are some values yeah. of checking? Well, the values of checking are we suddenly give her, we give Russ a chance to, you know, take a shot at us. Like, you know, he can bluff or he can bet his marginal hands here where he might fold the marginal hands that, you know, if we bet. Um, so I think usually, though, we're only getting, like, for hands that are medium strength, we're only getting one more street out of them no matter what we do at best. Now, if you bet, maybe you're going to lose that anyway. Um, the value of building a pot, of course, is maybe you can get two more streets. Um, 
But that, to me, that's the most obvious thing is like he's going to fold hands that he might either bet with or call the river with. I have a, an alternate thought here. I think that oh, yeah. the, the only way that I'm getting two more streets is if he has a flush also. Uh, I don't think it's very likely otherwise, unless maybe he has some sort of a set or a straight, but he didn't raise the flop, so that's a lot less likely. Didn't raise pre flop. King Jack just got there. He can also have a pair with a big club in his hand, like King Queen with the King of Clubs, right? I mean, yeah, but uh, wouldn't you expect him to bet all of those on the turn if I check anyway? He's um, not going to raise would... me at any point with those hands. Uh, that's true. King Queen with the King of Clubs is the one he might decide to check. Um, if he has ace 10, but that may fold anyway, if you bet. So I guess that's not as important. The straights are going to bet for sure. Uh, yeah. My, so my, my concern is that a jack of clubs, my concern is that on this card, I'm bet. scaring away too much of his range. I'm getting yeah. value from the flushes anyway, and I'm going to get value from the straights anyway as well. So I think it's more likely for me to get a second street on the river than on the turn. The, the other problem, of course, is there are certain cards that can come that will kill that plan pretty hardcore, right? There's straight cards like a jack, a king, an eight, or any club. That's true. Might kill action that you can get right now. So it goes both ways. Be for me, because you can potentially get two streets if he doesn't believe you, um, I'm a little more, I'm more inclined to bet than to check, but I understand your thinking. This is where being in position is so much better than being out of position. Obviously. So. Can I just be in position for this hand? I don't remember what I did yeah. here, but I actually think I like a check better than a bet. Sounds like you like okay. a bet better than a check. I do, but it's close. I certainly agree with you that it's close. You're at least considering a bet. Yep. One dollar. No, I did, ah, I did check. That. Wow. You, but that shows how close it was, right? He checks it right back. And then here's the scare card. Let's see if we get yeah. action here. Now we can just hope he has King 10, I guess. Go for, ooh, going for the big bet here, it looks like. What, what do you think about that? He has a I, king. Yeah, just trying I to think that's... By a king. Yeah, I actually like, I like it. When I first saw myself type that in, I was like, oh, that's not good. But <laughs> when you say that, I think I'm probably getting called by a king with a similar frequency if I bet 4,500 or 2,500, which uh, I would guess is my thought process here. I mean, the problem, of course, is you have ace kings based on how you played it pretty, pr very much so. And he has no ace kings. So still it's like it slight, takes a particular like the sizing the sizing like it isn't like a flush only that you have here with the sizing you also have ace king a lot i think with the sizing right true but it takes a particular player to be able to fold a king and i don't think many of That's them true. are playing in these tournaments yeah, that and, often, and of yeah. course a king blocks a blocks ace king which is pretty nice too you know yeah um if so he has see the if king I actually clubs in that. his hand if he has the king of clubs in his hand he's kind of obligated to call i'll say that like, i did go for everything. the big sizing but yeah. he folds. He probably just had like a 10 or a 9 or something. Yeah. I understand. I, I don't hate you going with the big size in there. I think, you know, trying to take really big swings when your opponent has often what feel, what's going to feel like a binary decision to them is a good idea. When you've got it, of course. All right. So we've got Ace King in the big blind. Let's see if it folds around to me. If it folds around to me, the interesting question is, should I raise or should I call? Yeah. And what are the merits of both of those? And I think that's actually a really interesting question that plagues many players in a spot like this at these I stack depths. Most players will three bet this. I rarely three bet this in this spot. I actually really like calling here. It underreps the hand. I, especially, we're talking specifically against the under the gun range. Although you could do it against other ranges too that open. Um, heads up is the most value here. Like Ace King wants to play heads up. It's already heads up. You don't have to do anything to isolate. I'm not in love with bloating the pot out of position when you're really, really deep. In it. And Ace King doesn't play super well, super deep. You know, if you're not going to get it all in pre and you don't want to get it all in pre. I really like a call here. Um, I know a lot of players would just three bet this automatically, but I'm off yeah, calling, especially with, when there's no ante or anything. I absolutely agree with everything you said there. I also don't want to make it 2100 and then I think I'm just folding if he makes it like 6500 and that yeah. seems like a waste. So yeah, I actually like that. Also, we get to underrep our hand on ace and king high flops. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Oh yeah. He, and right. those are flops he's going to represent, you know, if like he's going to bet. Mm -hmm. You have great opportunity to to get multiple streets of value with this hand. All right, let's see what I do. I think I I think I called. Let's see. Yep, yeah. looks like a call. Cool. King high flop. This. All right. Should I consider leading? First question. No. He's always going to bet this. Why would we lead? Yep. I agree. I scare I agree. him away. He's, if he has right. ace jack, we got to get a bet out of him. I did check. He's probably going to bet, I would guess, yeah. on this board. He does bet. Now, the question is to raise yep. or to call. Like, you are ahead of his range. There are two hearts on the board. 
you like he could give you a flush draw. It's not unreasonable to raise this. Of course, once in a while you're going to be in a horrible spot, I guess, where he three bets you. But that's much more rare than like, like it's not going to come up very often. I still like a call. I think um, it keeps us weaker and and doesn't like fold out a bunch of hands that we want to keep in there because like some hands we're just not afraid of. Like Ace Jack is just in jail. Ace Queen's just in jail against us and may feel like they have to take another shot at some point or may even pay off if like the hearts don't come in. I like a call, but a raise isn't crazy. What do you think? Those are good points. I think I actually slightly prefer a raise um, Mm. with, with the intention of going with it. If I get three bet, because there's heart heart draws that he could have. And I don't block that. I don't have ace of hearts King, which is much better to have against a three bet than if I did have the ace of hearts, in which case maybe I wouldn't even consider raising, but if I did, I might consider folding to a three bet, but with this hand, I don't think I could, I think I would just go with it. When you say going with it, do you mean you'd four bet or you'd call and just continue basically? I think I would four bet because I'm not putting him on too many bluffs at that point. Um, so I'd rather just put all the money in against hearts and not give them a chance to check back on the turn and stuff like that. Okay. Um, you could also lead some turns if you wanted to. Yeah. I also kind of like raising because it's like one of those things that the guy could be thinking, I'm under the gun. How are you raising this board? Like, yeah. this does, there's no real two pair combos that are that likely. Maybe you have eight, four and king, four and king, eight suited, but yeah, there's not too many two pair combos that are very likely. It's, there's no straights or flushes available. So it feels like sense. I have a lot. It feels like I have a lot of semi bluffs when I raise, which I like about adding Ace King to the raising range. If, if he knew you, he would know that actually you don't have that many semi bluffs in this spot because yeah. it's so much such, but, but he wouldn't necessarily know that about you, right? Um, yeah, you Although also, of course, be, have sets of eights and sets of fours here. But still. I would be quite tempted to raise with a hand like five, seven of hearts with no showdown value, though, even though. Okay. I, would I mean, a combo draw, call. fine. But yeah. there's very few combo draws on this board, right? There's very few. Yeah bluff raises on this board with enough equity against the under the gun range on this board, I would say. Yeah. I anyway. just think people like, like to put people on flush draws when they get raised on relatively dry boards that do have a flush draw on them. Agreed. I think I, I think I did end up raising if I remember correctly, but, and I think I like it, but I also think calling has plenty of merit. Well, oh, looks like I'm going for the call button. Nope. Change my you have mind. No idea what you're doing. <laughs> you're just, uh, you're simple Looking over buttons. there. Personality changing constantly. There's the raise. He's thinking. I don't remember what happened. I see you over there on the left observing. You see you. You you really are curious. Curious what he's doing. I mean, this one of my favorite things. He does fold. This, this of course, is the problem. One of the problems with this spot is, you know, if he's inclined to barrel off because the range is, you know, he's got a range advantage. We we lose some of that against a lot of players. But anyway. All right. Here we have Wonka opening. That is the Wonka of poker time more hair than he'll ever have in his life <laughs> just like i have more face fat than i'll ever have in my life in this well avatar we'll see about that we'll oh, see thanks. about that i'll see you in three years buddy all right looks like i'm going for a three but that was gonna be my question against a player yeah. like wonka is it better to call or three bet here with this kind I of mean, tough to play post flop hand i don't like a call at all against wonka's relatively early position open when you're this deep with ace jack off, I don't, I think we should probably just be folding it most of the time. Um, I don't really love a three bet either, but if I had to pick, I guess I prefer a three bet. If you're on the button, maybe I could come up, maybe I could justify a call a little bit more, the button or the big blind, but I really don't like a call. He's like okay. too tight. His ranges are too clear. I don't know if he has ace 10 off here. I don't think he does from this spot. So I think he's got like ace 10 suited plus pocket pairs and suited Broadway only. And I don't think we're doing great against that. And like, there's a lot of reverse implied odd situations with this hand. I agree. I hate a call. Um, I think a fold is totally fine and normal, although feels yeah. pretty tight. Um, I think a three bet is interesting against a player like Wonka. Taking the initiative in the pot against a range that is not going to have a ton of four bets, especially at this stack depth. And Wonka is mm. the type who's, he's going to pick and choose his spots a lot of the time. He's not going to try to battle with you or I that much. He's going to try to pick on other people a little bit. You would he's think gonna have, it, he's going to have almost no light four bets in this spot, like where you're this deep and he's opening in relatively early position and you're re-raising from what the cutoff, like, like, I don't think he's going to take ace five suited and turn to a bluff almost ever in this spot. So that that's kind of nice too. If he four bets, you just, you just fold and move on. Yeah. You know, he has it almost always. Yeah. And this three bet looks, if I am going to three bet, it looks like I am. It looks really strong, which is nice. And it is kind of like turning a, a decent hand into a bluff, but I think that's fine and I'm okay with it in a spot like this. Okay. Um, let's see what I do. I think I'm going to three bet. 
one of the downsides to three betting here is there's not a huge amount of upside right now. Like there's not that many chips to win really 850. I mean, I guess if he calls, then there could be. They all count levy. All the chips count. They do, but like it's better when the blinds, oh, hello, Costco called. When the blinds go up, you know, or the, there's antis and stuff like that, there's just more to win. It's better. Wonka folds and Costco calls. Interesting. Yeah, look at that. So what do you think about that? Um, like what, what type of range do you put Costco on? I guess we don't need to talk about Wonka folding. He just had one of his worst tans, I guess. So what, is, what does Costco typically have in your experience? Um, Ace, Queen, Plus pocket pairs probably like bigger pocket pairs meaning like eights to jacks and i think he can maybe have i don't know anything about this player but i would guess some players are going to show up with like king queen suited here also yeah yeah so yeah i think that's about right that's a pretty similar range that i was thinking of it's Mm -hmm. what you typically see uh i think this is a a slightly looser player than that might have a few more hands uh but not a ton more so do you think it's worth a C bet on this board? Yes, I do. Especially with the ace of spades in your hand, I think. I you agree. Three back doors. You have the initiative. You can fold out some hands for sure. You can also have a lot of good turn barrels. Also, you could just turn the best hand. You may already have the best hand. No, it's really hard to get. Rarely do you have the best hand right now, but I like a bet. Ooh, Uh-oh. okay. I don't remember this, but he, uh, he basically min-raised me. Yeah, he okay. definitely I don't think you. I don't think three betting is... A good idea, but <laughs> no way. What about calling? <laughs> we, we do have all these really good turn yeah. cards that we can hit, or at least some oh. reasonably good turn cards, some really good turn cards. I, I think we should call for sure. Like with the yeah. Ace of Spades specifically in our hand, I think we should call. I think this often is, I mean, once in a while this is super strong and it's like top set, but like mostly I think this is more like, uh, you know, pocket eights kind of a hand, mostly, maybe pocket yeah. jacks but like hands that don't love their spot so much. And I think a call, we're going to get a lot of information on the turn. And also we're going to sometimes hit a great card on the turn. You know, there's like some really good cards for us. The queen of spades, the king of spades, the, mm-hmm. any spade really, but the five deuce of spades, spades, the deuce of spades, spades yeah. an ace, a jack. Those are all really, really strong cards for us. And I don't know. I think at this price in position, this is a call. I agree. And sometimes on spades, I could maybe bluff him in the future oh, yeah. if i decide to based on size I mean, or I think, whatever i think if he checks you're betting almost any turn like well here, that's if he's, a terrible if he card checks. Yeah. but if he, if checks, he checks you have kings a lot right like and he's like got two sevens and he's gonna just have to give up but now we can fold <laughs> yeah i think now it's time to give up we didn't get one of the cards Jesus. that we wanted with that no sizing way. it would have been tough even on the two back doors i think i would have just had to shove on like a king yeah. of spades type you would honestly just a spade probably wouldn't have been enough with that size. You wouldn't need like yeah. a combo draw sizing. You could have hit top pair though and, and decide to hold on to. You probably would have had True. to. Let's Either way, I, I folded that one. You. Make a play. Go ahead, Jonathan. <laughs> oh, you did. Throw. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't remember this hand at all. So I don't know what I had, but good for me. Ooh, I don't believe you. Look at this. I don't know what was going on here, but it looks like I really don't believe you. I may remember this hand now. We're going to see. Am I going to pull the trigger? Wow, I did you put it. In so much. Yeah. Put in a 30 year stack, more than a 30 year stack. Yeah. So it was it looks signaling. like you're committed. Yep. And, and you did fall me out. I got gotcha. you. You got me that time. That was a weird decision. I wasn't three betting you that much. I don't think. Maybe you were. Otherwise, I don't know why I would have done that. With that hand specifically, it seems like yeah. you should just call usually. <laughs> it's like plays really well when you're deep. But anyway, right, here we are. Right, so blind versus blind. This is uh, Satoshi492, who we've battled in, in past tourney journeys. It's a relatively good player, makes a few mistakes, but is aggressive and tough to play against sometimes. Mm, hey, look at that. Card. The sickest. Really good. All Grant does is run better than anyone in the history of the world. Yeah, I remember how this tournament ended, so maybe you, you <laughs> might, might want to amend that statement. Remember. All right, I just called on the turn. Okay. What do you think about that? Um, against the aggressive Satoshi, who's going to have a pot size bet back is fine. Yeah, I'm hoping for a shove. Let's see if we get the... Were you, were you uh, obviously, on... a, spade, a spade's not ideal, but we block it, oh, it's, and it's fine. it's fine. Were you calling in any club also? Oh, we get the check. All right. Yeah. Um, I was probably calling on any club also, yeah. yeah. So do we go for value here? Yes. Come on. Do we go for, for sure. all of it? Do we go for all of it? I don't, I don't think we should go for all of it. I think if Satoshi had a, had a good enough hand... Like, I guess we could have missed clubs, but... I don't know. We called the turn, so we don't have that many missed clubs. Like, we're going to play that more aggressively almost always, right? 
I mean, uh, we block everything we want Satoshi to have, a 10 or a king mostly. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I think maybe the best thing to do is to bet really small, try to get the yeah. click were response, get the shove and never fold to any shove. Just like bet oh, that's like not bad. 1800 or something. Yeah, I think I if I thinking, shove, if I shove, I'm I'm just hoping Satoshi has a king and decides to hold on. That is a a line that you would expect with a from a good player with a king, right? On that, yeah, run absolutely, out. absolutely. Yeah. Satoshi can have a king here, um, and that's the one place where like, by betting two thousand you just lose value. But mostly, I I don't hate your the idea of betting tiny. I was thinking I'd bet small just to try and keep Satoshi in. Period. Talk Satoshi. Oh, it looks like, like uh, I'm going oh, for the grand, the whole enchilada. And choose the big sizing. See trying to rep out. those missed clubs. And I got and called. you get called. And, and I win. What does Satoshi have? We don't know. We don't get to know what Satoshi had? Nope. But it was probably, probably a king, right? Uh, yeah. It could have been aces even. You know, like just trying to get you to uh, put chips in when you are uh, with your missed draw. All right. So we have the same player opening the button, having rebought. What do we yeah. do with the queen 10 suited here with uh, 30 blinds effective on the button? Hmm. I think you can call this. It's okay to raise two. Probably you should. This hand plays so well as a call, though you are out of position and you are bringing me in by calling. Those those things suck. Um, I guess I mostly three bet this, but I, I, I think it's fine to call. I mostly call this in this spot uh, with like 30, 30 plus blinds effective. I just don't love bloating the pot out of position against a player who's not yeah. apt to fold that much. This hand can play well multi-way if you enter the pot as well. Um, the suited nature of it and all that connected i mean if satoshi's gonna fold this is like one of the ranges satoshi's gonna most likely have a lot of folds on yeah right? that's so there is that's that. fair but but uh, to your point you don't have very you, you don't have great blockers or anything like that they're mean right. to, to bad ish blockers anyway so i think a a king, like, and like, king 10 suited is a much better three bet not because it's a better hand but because the king is a more valuable mm -hmm. blocker yeah that's fair i think it's like gonna call fine for sure yeah I hope I come along. I'm getting a really good price. I'd have to have a pretty bad nope. hand to fold. Oh, man. Such a bad hand. Such discipline, though. All right. Well, this is a terrible flop. Yeah. Am I going to do something? No. Oh, they check back, I see. So I guess now I have to rep it. I mean. So when they check back, you? should I rep it? I don't think you should. I think Satoshi has, like, made hands here that are not big aces, but has small aces and, like, reasonable pocket pairs that are not folding on this barrel almost ever is my guess. So I actually think you should be checking. But yeah, I agree. See. I agree. It looks like I'm going to bet, but I agree with what you're yeah. saying. It's too tempting, I guess, with no equity against everything. Right. And so she's like calls because Satoshi engineered it. Ooh, Maybe, the spade you know, this comes is, and the four gets for, there. You have, you have spades and Satoshi almost never does. So that's the good news. You should size the hell out of this though. You should bet like 7,000, I think. Let's see what like I do. I before with the, uh, with the top I definitely two. like a bet. Now I Hopefully like a bet I with that spade coming in. I guess half the deck is going to be a... Well, the thing is, Satoshi can... Have, yeah, I would have, I would have gone higher. Just get yeah, snapped off by the ace. There's eight. the medium ace, yeah. Yeah. I think you're getting called anyway, honestly, no matter how you size it, with the eight of spades in, in Satoshi's hand. But It's the very next hand here. Got the fives on the button and now 40 blinds effective for Satoshi. Going to set yeah. mine slash take my equity... Get called by Costco on the big blind as well. Terrible flop. Seems Just fine. probably going to fold most of the time if a C bet comes in, right? Yeah. Ooh, but it's checked around. Should I bet for equity denial or should I check? I think you can bet this. Uh, like you're almost, unless a five comes on the turn, you're basically, it's going to be really hard for you to win this pot or ever know where you're at. You can bet small right now to deny equity and get a lot of information about where everybody is. Satoshi doesn't have a strong hand almost ever by checking here. Could have a jack, but also could just have give ups because you're three handed. I don't know. I, I the thing that frightens me about betting is that like I'm building a pot when I don't want to, and I think I'm getting yeah. called a lot by one of these two players. There's just too many draws yeah. that can call. Like I don't expect Satoshi has any flush draws, but it, Satoshi could have two overs and a gut shot, or even an open ender sometimes. Either I mean, of them could sure. have different types of gut shots that aren't folding. Um, Costco could easily have a 10 R jack as well. Costco could have almost anything though, right? Costco called from the big blind closing yeah. action. Costco's pretty wide. So I'm not too worried about Costco's range. Satoshi, basically, the only things we're really folding out, I think, are like ace, ace X hands, like ace seven and ace, ace eight and ace yeah. five, right? Almost I'm just concerned against two players. I don't have enough fold equity. I don't have enough yeah. fold equity to justify equity denial as, as a that, reason to bet. That's fair. You can also check here. And if, if a brick comes on the turn and they check you again, then you can do some equity denial. 
you know, yeah. like not give another free card. I like that uh, plan better. Point. Let's see what I think, we, what I, think we do. I do too. We do check. Ooh. Oh my God. Come That's a good on. card. Why are you so upset? Oh, sick. You can't be upset by that. Hey, look at this. I, I, root, get, I, I root for the fans. I don't root for you. All right. I root for the fans. We get bet into what do we want to do? Looks like I already am planning on calling. Uh, well, this is another one of those, you know, try and build a pot right now and get it all or uh, don't scare off your, uh, your opponent. You think Costco's really wide here. I yeah. think it's fine to call. We can also rep miss clubs later or he can take another shot hoping we miss clubs or he has clubs. So we're going to get action usually anyway, unless it's a really bad river. You can have a 10. I think a call is fine. Um, I don't hate a raise though either, like a small raise to like 4,100. But yeah, because if he has a 10 or clubs, you might get it all right now. You know, that's true. The good news. I am losing to some hands, but that's not really the concern. Oh, whatever. Yeah, who cares? We're just like gonna, I do go with the thing. call. Because we're raising the river, right? Like we're definitely yeah. raising the river. If, I think he, so. He can have queen 10. We just, well, he checks. He checks. So he probably has something a lot of the time, right? I mean, if Maybe. he has king queen or queen nine or a ace jack or a 10 or yeah, definitely got a bet. Yeah, uh, I think I think against that range, okay. I want to size it a little a little smaller. Uh, unless maybe I was thinking Costco is is gonna call a lot of sizes because it's a pretty loose aggressive player. But typically, I think I, I like a bit of a smaller bet. Try to get called by a jack sometimes, something like mm. twenty eight hundred to thirty five hundred. I would size it even bigger just because we have so many like uh, ace of clubs in our hand here. Well, I want a little bigger. Thirty eight hundred got called and. We'll never know what called us, but could have been queen, queen, jack, king, queen, ace, jack, a 10. Here's another blind versus blind battle against Satoshi. Got to all the deny at this table. You and Pete. Oh, I check it back. Uh, I think I was trying to induce a bluff, but I get a, a bad turn card. I guess we're going to equity to die now. Yeah, seems fine. Hopefully you don't get raised, but it's unlikely. Call. call okay. That's fine. We're usually Seven we're pairing. almost always ahead here. But I should I go for value? value? I mean, we're, we're only getting value from threes and ace highs, right? Yes. We're chopping with the fives anyway. Ah, uh, it's close. We're almost never losing. That's the good news. Almost never. I think it's pretty close. I think it's okay to check this back. Uh, yeah, I agree. I might go for a little value. I might try and get called by ace high once in a while. I think I think I might bet a thousand here, but. I have no problem with checking it back. It was limp preflop too. It makes Satoshi less likely to have ace high. Yeah. But then a three. I mean, then a three is really the only thing we're targeting. Yeah. It's like I checked back. Ooh, good check. Holy Satoshi had a straight. Moly's. So that's interesting. I just want to talk about that for a second. Satoshi checked three times with a straight, tried to do the Johnny Chan. Yep. But I guess it didn't work out that time. Notable. Oh. Yes. I mean, all you, if you had bet, all you, what would happen is you would have lost an extra thousand, right? Oh my God, hey, you flopped the straight. I did. And this is PDX Liz, who we've seen on Tourney Journeys before. She's actually yep. played on Poker Time as well, I think twice. Um, what do you like? Do you like a better a check when she calls out of oh the big blind? God. I'm betting this, baby. Come on. We flopped a straight. I know what Grant yep. Dennison says about that. Grant Dennison yep. says you don't block any made hands. Of course you bet. Going small. You can't improve. Yeah. This. And get the fold. I guess no, just fine. wanted to check it She's back there. Any pair. Should have checked. <laughs> She's probably just checking, check folding the turn mostly anyway. Yep. All right. I could have three bet there, but yeah, I, I think flatting is a little bit easier way to play this hand. And I get a really good flop here. Mm -hmm. Still don't have, you know, the blinds still aren't that huge. Mm -hmm. It's not that big a deal to just check call. I think it's fine. Or sorry, to, to just call the pre-flop raise. Well, well, well. I, I don't even know anymore. Almost always like, ahead. It, we can really hope Liz has an ace here. Um, yeah. Rarely does she have a flush draw because she didn't bet the flop. So she doesn't have, well, she got a flush draw now, but usually not a flush. Exactly. She has the get king called. of spades, but she, she doesn't have king, queen of spades almost ever. Yeah, we All just right, go for so, it again and try and get value out of that ace. Yeah. Size it up. 4,000. It makes makes tons of sense for her to check back with a hand like ace queen on the flop. So let's hope she has that. Mm -hmm. And now you gotta, you're going to rep having the big spade and you're going to bet big to try and get an ace to pretend you're trying to get an ace to fold. That's what I would think. Oh, there you go. Full pot. That's exactly. And but I just can't get value. She had the king of spades. 
<laughs> I guess so. Or, you know, a one pair, a poor one pair of hand that called once. All right, we got antes now, and we got Batiste opening the button. I have ace four off. I could three bet his range specifically, but it's also mm -hmm. fine to play this and just see a flop. And we get a, a reasonable flop, get the gut shot. I kind of like a check raise on this board as the big blind against Batiste. What do you think? Yeah. I, I think this board specifically is a great, a great one to check raise. The ace high nature of your hand means you could decide to check call, but he's often going to put extra pressure. Ooh. Oh, jeez. He checked oh, back and I made this straight. Uh, Batiste is a player that can have flushes here. I'm not yes. hyper concerned about it, but he's definitely the type of player who likes to be tricky and, and have some flushes in his range when he checks back the flop. So looks like I'm heading for the check. What do you Weird. think the best course of action is? I think you should lead for sure. Like you would lead this card a lot as a bluff. Anyway, you'd be like, he doesn't have clubs. This is my board. Um, you actually have it. You don't block that much stuff. I would, I would bet, but um I could see him checking back again. I guess I could see him checking back. I also know that Batiste's inherent nature is aggressive. So maybe I'm hoping he's, it looks like I'm going to check. I must be hoping he just can't help himself. You know, yeah. like earlier in the first hand, I typed fight the urge to him. Yeah, I think that urge true. is a little real for him. He does want to always take an aggressive action, especially against me or you or players like he us. He also wants to make great hero calls against us though. That's true. You know, we can, we can, we can good play point. into that by just betting on a spot where we're supposed to bet, you know? Like, as soon as he bets once and we call, it looks like, oh, like, why didn't we do it? Like, we have something reasonable that often. Oh, he checked again. Hey, it Look looks like that. I checked, I checked my way into oblivion. So how do we want to proceed now? Hmm. I guess we should check and check to call a lot here. He didn't bet the turn. He can still have some clubs, of course. He usually doesn't have huge clubs, so we can eliminate some. He may feel obligated to bluff on this card when we check. Um, I think it's hard for, to get called even by one pair of hands if we bet. I think I like a check now. What do you think about like a really small blocker bet? Like a thousand or something? Something like uh, that. I don't know. I mean, I think that's fine. I think that's fine too. He might raise that. So then you have to like have a plan. I think the plan would be to fold most likely. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just but a I random bluff if he's bluffing. Yeah, he might be jumping on the blo the blocker bet nature of it, though. He True. Might. Let's that's, see. That's, he's the kind of guy who might do that. So Ooh, I'm nervous. min bet. Interesting. Well, I guess you can get called by worse when you min bet. Yeah. I mean, he's got it's six hundred to one forty three hundred from his point of view. If he has, if he had like rivered at ten, how is he going to fold? I mean, he could because it looks like you. And oh, there's he the raises. Raise. Oh, this is cool. This all played out. And it, oh, I folded. See, this is what sucks about that. It's like you might yeah. have the best hand. He made it pretty small there. I mean, like, it was less than the size of the original pot that he made it. It was like 2,900. That makes me think he has it a lot, I think. Or at least maybe he can have, like, the queen of clubs plus, perhaps. So, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know about how I played that, but I thought it was kind of interesting, yeah. at least. Definitely interesting. Right, we got Costco raising under the gun. We got jacks on the button. We're deep. Assuming no three bet comes in, how do you typically play this? Uh, Costco's pretty wide, right? You were saying Costco's opening a lot? I don't know about opening a lot, but certainly loose. Oh. Um, I think I'd want a three bet then. We're seven handed. I think this is a three bet. I know we're deep with Costco and it's an under the gun open, but I think I like a three bet. Well, I don't, I don't hate, hate a call, what I did then. I, 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 I don't hate that, but I prefer a three bet. Hey, that's a good Which, flop. Costco's loose, especially like that means we're going to get a lot of calls. You know? All right. So flat middle set and Costco checked. I think I have Got to bet it. here to start building a pot and there's plenty of draws out there. There's so many bad cards to kill action or beat you. And yeah, you just got to bet. All right. Going for less than half pot, hoping to get called. Do get cool. called. Great turn card. Yep. Almost always ahead here. Second nuts, easy bet. Sizing it Size, up, I like it. Yep. Charge the draws the maximum. Oh, Ooh, wow. gets snap called. And the six of hearts, beautiful Ooh. card. So we could go for a big bet here and just, I mean, Costco did check the flop. It makes a flush draw a lot less likely, but yeah. still. That's problematic with this big bet idea. I think, I think a big bet isn't going to work super well because of that. Yeah, you might be Costco right. Costco doesn't have many flushes. I think you should bet more normal size like, 8,400 or something. 
Yeah, you're I, going I went pretty I big. Too high. Now maybe Costco's loose enough to oh. call. Oh wow, you did get called. Got called. I mean, never know what he had, but that's no a nice idea. one. Yeah. I mean, could it possibly be like two tens? Like, what could Costco I guess. be calling with there? Maybe an like overpair really that a weirdly played overpair. I don't know. Pocket. Aces, ace queen, kings. I don't know. Weird. Anyway, get the excellent flop here. No diamonds, but ooh, oh, I checked. Check. Board based. It's check. a that's got to be a board based thing, yeah. And I think overall, I, I I do think that's cool. It's like a good play what the good players make, but in practice, it's a lot easier to play if you bet. But you know, you have to make board based checks with hands that are vulnerable sometimes, and I can improve, which is nice as well. What do you think? It's usually, it's usually better to do it against guys who you think, you know, are like more advanced because otherwise this guy may not understand what the hell's going on and isn't going to play back you on this board anyway. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know enough anything about this player. So, and you've been playing with him potentially, I guess I've been playing with him too, but I don't have any memory of him. Uh, so, so I think mostly I would bet this against a, gen, a general population kind of field, but I think the better your opponents, the more you need to be checking here. I agree with that. Well, I did the fancy good player play. Let's see yeah, what happens on the turn. It's cool. I mean, it can't be that bad to do it, almost no matter what. But well, well, we didn't no do folding. So we got, of course, oh my God, no folding. Let's see what the river brings. Bad card. Well, we'll see what the size is. We're, oh, and he checks. Oh, That's pretty. I good. get to check it back real quick. Head threes. Easy okay, play. cool. Eventually, I'll play against you in a hand. I think. You and I have all the chips. We're the top, top two chip players. And this is mm -hmm. the final table, I think, right? Uh, sure yeah. It, it says your current position, one out of seven. Hey, oh, we yeah, got the check. Go. So I checked back on the flop. I guess I'm just trying to realize my equity against Costco, and I'm okay that seems with fine. Uh, checking back and get the gut shot on the turn here. Probably can't fold, especially having no checked way. the flop. No way. You even know the queen of diamonds gives you an opportunity. to. Hey, it's yeah, a king. Look at that. Woo. But it is a diamond. What a card. Whatever. <laughs> We're not raising unless he bets tiny, but. Yeah, just snap call. You win. You always win. Against yeah. eight, three of spades. So that's the type of player we're dealing with. That tells us a lot. Now, yeah. I mean, I like the call pre still because it was a min call. And yeah. He's suited. Although he's, I see he's gone now. <laughs> so, I see I've also right. taken the chip lead. Sucka. What do you, what do you do in this situation? All right, what's well, 28 to win 62? So we're getting a great price. Uh, does, do, the only question I would have is, does Uncle Sam three bet much, right? If Uncle Sam is really never three betting, I probably just dump it. Uh, otherwise, I'm calling in position getting this price. Yeah, I agree with that. And I don't remember Uncle Sam that well either. So yeah, yeah against a, a neutral opponent, I think the price is too good in position to fold. Although it yeah, sucks to fine. play this hand post You got to be really careful. You got to be yeah. super careful. Because it's like I I've do been make in a spot call. a lot where I talk myself into calling with like king queen suited, and then you flop top pair, and you just they have aces every time, and it sucks. So you, yeah, you and the stack the pot ratio means with. stack the pot ratio means I might have to just call off depending on how it yeah. goes. I guess the third I street so. I can fold. I do have the jack of spades; it's back up. Obviously, can't fold this flop. Ten on the turn is not the best really card, not the worst check. card. Really hoping for a check here. Have the queens, great. have ace queen. A baby bet is okay, also I guess, but a big bet sucks. I mean, what are you supposed to do if you bet? Oh, well, that makes it so much easier. So you're just going to check this back, right? This is like yeah. Grant Denison 101. <laughs> check yeah. back that check back that spot. Uh, he checks right. again. So now, we, now we're pretty sure we have the best hand. Yeah, we got to go for uh, value, but I think we got to bet kind of small against the range that he's yeah. representing. It feels I like mean, he has queens, facing, jacks, nines. Like, yeah, like, and we, we block the jacks. A nine is bad, by the way. We lose to a nine. Um, oh, yeah. Jacks we block. That's true. We're really just targeting. We're mostly targeting queens here. Uh, that's true with a little bit of jacks uh maybe ace 10 once in a while but eh, eh. i don't even know if ace 10 is going to call i don't know if queens are going to call this is kind of a terrible card for all these hands that we're targeting maybe we should it just go feels like we're we're ahead almost all the time when he checks it twice does. i think we we, we can, can bet, bet but we have to we have to bet really small i think to make it a good bet Four thousand. yeah let's see what i do I, I like a small bet a lot yeah, small is the only option here, that's for sure. Even 4,000, yeah, 4,500. Can you get called? Let's Maybe find he's out. He's going to be tied to his, emotionally tied to the Queens and call, even though, like, 
this is a horrible board for Queens when you call on the flop. Yes, it is. What the hell? Spades come in. The king is there. You call the Don't shove. Three. Please don't shove. You like never have ace eight. Well, he's giving it a good yes, thing. Like, he, he does oh, call. He does call. It's gotta I must win. Yeah. It's got to be Queens. It does. Well, cool. Look we're how many chips you and chips. I have. Hey, yeah, it's you and I. We're going to play a pot. Oh, okay. We have all the a chips. Lot of players, a lot of players are going to three bet this, but I think it's smart when we're the two chip leaders to not lose your mind here, especially because yep. I think it's a two, two people get paid or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Like it just, you don't want to play a really high variance pot with like ace queen against the one guy who can bust you out of position, et cetera, et cetera. I like you. And also Nella, look how under you are. So cool. All right. So what do we want to do against this player with ace queen on this board? I mean, a raise can't be bad, right? No, I agree. It just can't be bad. But getting three bet is the worst. Disaster. When, when we're this deep. I would say, um, I mean, standard play here is to check call. But it is a wet board. You're going to be out of position. It's not crazy at all, the raise. I don't know what's better. What do you, what do you think is better? I think due to our stack depth and the fact mm -hmm. that nobody else is close to us in chips, I... Yeah. I guess it's not that high variance because I can raise fold, but I mean, you have a ton of semi bluffs there if you three bet, but I'm still not willing to to put in all the chips against you. So I think I mean, for that reason, I, I should probably. Ton. Well, if you if you three I if ace, you three bet, I have ace jack of clubs. I have ace jack clubs and king jack clubs. What else do I have? That's three. You have jack nine of. You probably have jack nine of clubs. Oh, okay. Five, five handed. Okay, fine, but that's three combos total. That's not a ton of semi bluffs, you know. Okay, what I'm saying is when you three bet, if I were to raise and you three bet. Like yeah. you have just sets and semi bluffs, right? Um, yeah, I guess I maybe could have top two. Maybe I could have queen ten. That's the only yeah. other thing I can have there. Right. So I don't. I just don't love it. Like even though I can yeah. put you on semi bluffs and just like I just have to fold to the three bet, and I don't right. like that. I I don't and, like it either. When you have a hand this strong, it seems terrible. And you're just gonna call me with kings and aces and take all my money yeah. in the future. I'm never you're gonna, gonna fold. fold. You're gonna fold everything that's not a ten or better, and I block queens. I'm I'm going to fold the 10 or jacks eventually if you keep going for value at least some yeah. of the time. I might call some of the time because it's a wet border, but I'm not going to... You're, you're going to struggle to get value from, men, from many worse hands, and you're going to really struggle to fold out better hands. So it feels like a call. I agree. I think a call is a better. wet board at least. I this do is call. my range. It's a range advantage for me, even though we see you actually have a great hand. All right. Oh, this the is club an action is, killer, which sucks. It's not a great card. Either of us can have a flush as played. We know that about each other. Like, yes. you know about me that I would check call plenty of flush draws on that board. Of course, on that board for sure. If I so bet, if you bet again, again, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary, but you could just be doing like a, you have a, a wide calling range. I mean, obviously I had to call there, but you could just be doing like a, well, you're going to have trouble with a 10 or a four now or like pocket eights. So it would make sense I for you to continue. Gonna have, I'm usually going to have at least a big club here to be able to bet, but I could maybe have like, Queen Jack with the Jack of Clubs, maybe? Nah. You could, probably you could have like King Jack, maybe, right? Or what about if you had like, what if you had Ace Jack or Ace King? You might want to continue semi bluffing uh, because you can get yeah. me to fold a lot. Yeah, you're right. I could, I could sometimes do that because that's a bad card for you most of the time. Yeah. In your hand, it turns out very strong. And I bet small enough, by the way, that makes it it's still hard. Actually, I just remembered this hand. If I bet again, or if you bet again, yeah. it's going to be a tough spot for me here. With my so, end of the gun range. Oh, you you snap check with King Jack. I okay. Gave, I gave up. Yeah. Pot size bet would have gotten it done. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But I didn't want to play a huge pot against you either right there. You know, like I wanted hey. to maintain my, I'm still number one in chips, right? Like why lose yep. another 13,000? Check out this. I know board. I'm always losing, but it's okay. Yeah. This is a hell of a flop. And look, so at I just this. move I in. To, I got yeah, yeah, to yeah. just move in. I'm, it's so wet. So is going to be like, going to be forced to call with all the draws anyway. No, that's not a draw. I need a well, six or a nine. Really not a draw. Well, the spades got there anyway. <laughs> you would have lost. So who's spades, lucky? Rob. Who's lucky now, Levy? Is it me? Was that lucky? You still, have, you still have more chips than Satoshi. Hey, look, let's play another pot. Look at you trying to steal. You disgust me. You got to go for it sometimes, man. Of course you do. And you flop pretty good. Decent. What? Two overs with a gut Four. shot. I really hope I don't have an ace and a four comes, you know, because that would be a bad combo. Well, 
that would be, but I don't think that's going to happen based on. I don't think so either. Future events. I don't really remember. That, you did call. I don't love that. Oh, no, I get double should. gutter now. I have to keep betting. Yeah, you do. Because you can't check call. That seems crazy with seven high. Out of position. Yep. About half pot. Could even size up a little more, but that's cool. Got rid of a three or a deuce there probably. Yeah, just any baby pair. Just like folding a lot of stuff there. It's true. Now I flat you. Look at all the chips I have now. Jeez, good things have happened. Yeah. Um, if you want to see those good things, you can check out a tourney journey with Jonathan. I think it was the two-parter that we did. Yeah. I think you're right. Obviously, I'm not folding to this shove. No. The question is to isolate or not. I think probably it's best to isolate. Yeah, because I'm. I guess I'm calling a fair amount here. Probably I have like king jack suited and king queen suited and stuff, and just ace jack. I mean the hands that you dominate, but it's easier just to push me out. Oh, there's an eight, and it's a club. So yeah. who's lucky now, Jonathan? You're is still second in chips. You're still second in chips even after absorbing bad beats. That's how lucky you are. Oh yeah, okay, that's a good. Look point. at all the chips I have though. It's beautiful. All right, I limped the ace to so suit. I remember this one. Oh, this yeah. is a this is a really good three betting combo. Oh yeah, I remember this hand. I remember what I had on this hand. What did you have? I'll tell you. In a, I'll tell you after the hand's over. So you go for the three bet. All right, let's talk about that for a second. Um, the limp three bet. Mm. What do you What do you think about that as a general strategy against an opponent like you? And what type of range should I be doing it with? Um, I like it uh, as long as you're going to be limping. You know, not three betting a lot. Also, you know, you gotta, yeah. But um, I, I think it's great to do that. Otherwise, you're going to be, unless you're always limping or always raising, like you need to have, some of your limps have to be s strong limps, which means you can't just have bluffs here. You need to have like, you know, queens oh, sure. once in a while too. But, um, but I really like that to keep me on my toes and make, make things harder. Um, I think this is, I mean, certainly the right kind of bluff. This is where all your bluffs should be as the, the suited wheel aces, right? Uh, yeah. So I, so I really like it. And I like your sizing too. Like if I, I'm going to definitely have hands that are not strong here that are insta folds when you do this, like a lot of hands. So I like it absolutely as a, as a way to attack me without having to play this hand out of position. Um, Cause if you call here, you're going to have major stack to pot ratio issues. If you don't flop an ace basically or a flush. Draw. Yeah. So, so I really like this spot. Yeah. And I think a range that you could construct, if you want to do this a lot against a player like, like Jonathan or like me, a good range to do it a lot with would be like ace, deuce, three, ace, five suited as your bluff side, just so you block the big aces. And if you get called, you have something to go on. And maybe also like half of your tens through aces and ace kings, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. In practice, you could probably even be more bluff heavy because if a, it depends on who the player is, but against a guy like me, who's going to, uh, me against you is a little different. We have so many dynamics. We know so much, but against like, normally I'm going to raise a lot here, you know? So like, yeah, you could probably have more bluffs than you need to for a while until I realize what you're doing. And then you have to start to be balanced. But like in the beginning, you probably don't have to be balanced at all. <laughs> so anyway, well, I remember what happens next and it's not so nice. Me too. You just shove on Sucker. me and that sucks. What did you have? I had Kings. I was hoping you actually had, it. Ah. I was all like, right. have Jacks, have Jacks. <laughs> I figured you were folding to any four bet size anyway. That what you know, either you're going with it or you're not at that point. Didn't matter. So we were just a, well. Oh, look at this. Looks like you're you're about to get jammed on. It looks like. Good. Bring it on. I'm sure I've got you crushed. Oh yeah, because you would only three bet with a hand better than tens out of the small. Blind. I remember this hand. I know what I have. So sorry, sucker. Get ready to get taken out, sucker man. Watch this. Look at the monster. Oh. <laughs> oh. He's oh. Off an eight. Cool. So easy. Yeah. Oh look my at the god. Turn card. Turn card. So crazy. You run so and good. And that <laughs> is the end of my tourney journey. Oh. So do I, do I run good? Do I run so good, Jonathan? I mean, you ran good until that hand. <laughs> and some other hands. Wow, that is a, that's a brutal thing for you. Look at the chip stack I'm going to have here compared to everybody else. Jeez, what a spot. Uh, well, if you want to see what happens with Jonathan's chips and how it's funny and hilarious, um, yeah. There's a tourney journey. It's the only two-part tourney journey. So the first one is labeled part one. And I think that the second one is something like, can Jonathan close the deal? It's called something like mm. that. So if yeah. you guys want to see that. And for some reason, Jonathan didn't include this hand in that tourney journey. Weird, isn't it? Where he, he knocks out the other poker guy and it's a big pot. Somehow <laughs> decides not to include it. Is I he embarrassed? Understand. Is he embarrassed? I, no. <laughs> it's definitely not it. I didn't understand that. I was just supposed to include like, significant pots and stuff. I was just going for like interesting decisions. And to me, this was not an interesting decision at all. You know, it's like, obvious, no, it's not 
an obvious it's, call, a three bet call it off spot. So there's nothing to talk about. It's the turning That's journey. The mind. audience, they well, need to I see, see that now. how we get there and what I happens. now understand that. Yes. But anyway, that was the, the sad end of that. my turning journey at the hands of the evil Jonathan and his you, evil you ways. What, you got what you deserved. Yeah. I got all of my luck. I have so much luck. You didn't, you shouldn't <laughs> have been here in the first place. You know, I was, I played um, back in the day there used to be a Portland poker club called Encore and they were had at the time was the biggest guaranteed tournament in the history of Portland. And it was something like, I mean, it wasn't a lot, but it was like $30,000 guaranteed or something. The first place was like $7,000, which at the time was huge for this area anyway. And we were down to two tables. It was actually more than, and there was probably like $70,000 in the pot though. Like we were down to two tables and, uh, I end up, I'm, I have a lot of chips and I end up playing a blind versus blind hand where I, uh, I get it in against this other player who just has a flush draw. I flop top pair and I three bet all in on the flop and he calls somehow with the flush draw and rivers it. And I'm down to like one and a half blinds or something like that. And earlier in this tournament with like four hand, four tables left, I shoved with like nine blinds and Jack 10 got called by Kings and won the hand. And so like, this is a monster pot at this point to lose, you know, first place is probably like, I said it was seven K, but it's probably more. It's probably more like 10 K. Um, so this is a monster pot when the guy rivers the flush and I'm like, and the whole table's like in shock that this just happened. Everyone's been playing so tight and so careful. And then this monster pot just happened. And I'm like, sort of in, can't believe it. And some guy from the other, the other table, cause everyone like gathered around was watching. He was at this table when I had Jack 10, he wasn't even the guy, but he was one of the players. He looks at me and says, that's what you deserve. You shouldn't even be <laughs> here as I'm like in the pain of the dude, just rivering this flush draw. And like, I would have been the monster chip leader and all that. And, uh, so you're saying that's what's happening here. You're that yeah. guy and I'm yeah. you. Okay. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> you get what you deserve, sucker. Get out of here. Go, go get on your damn bicycle and ride around the block six times because that's all you got. You got all the free time in the world now, don't you? I got to keep right. playing this poker tournament. Okay. Well, that's the end of this tourney journey. And now I'm sad. Are you, yeah. are you happy that I'm sad now? I am actually. <laughs> I, get some, I get some joy out of your, your tears. There's no question about it. Sorry.